everyone. I'm so glad that you're with us on Welcome Home Today. This particular segment is a wonderful segment with a good friend of mine from years past. His name is Larry McFadden, and he has an incredible ministry to pastors globally. And so we're going to focus on this part of our Ministries Opportunity Show to really let you get a heart for what we are doing globally. Larry McFadden, thank you so much for being here with us today. My pleasure. I'm glad to be here, Barbara. Well, it's always good to see your wife, who is not on the set with you, but she's here with you today. Yeah. You and Teresa have been married for how long? Into this month will be 47 years. Congratulations. And still going strong. Still going strong. I was 10 years old when we got married. <laughs> I believe it. I and, believe it. And uh, she was five. Still having a good time. <laughs> That's great. Well, Larry, tell us a little bit because I, I, I love to hear what you're doing worldwide, in particular in, in Africa. Well, I just got back from Zimbabwe, South Africa. It was my first time to be in South Africa. Uh -huh. I've done a lot in East Africa and West Africa, and this was my 94th overseas mission trip. Wow. Not to Africa, but just overseas anywhere. Everywhere. You know, that I've been to India amazing. 16 times, Haiti 21 times. Wow. Uh, I've been to Africa probably 50 times. Is Africa your heart? Is that where you, re it you really, really have a passion is, for those to a, people? To a large degree, because what we do is we go to the remote areas, mm -hmm. and we find those pastors, most of them are bivocational. And they don't have any Bible college or seminary. Yeah. Those are the ones we go for. Yeah. And we house and feed them for four or five days. And uh, I usually take one other teacher with me, and mm -hmm. we just go back and forth all day long. Wow. And we teach those pastors. How to pastor, at, right? Um, everything. Yeah. I mean, it is amazing. We teach them basic doctrine, mm. evangelism, discipling, mentoring, uh, we even do scripture memory with them. They don't That's emphasize great. scripture memory wow. in Africa yeah. at all. Yeah. Nothing like what all of us had. But you have here. to always have an interpreter with you, right? They oh, don't yeah. speak English. In those places. Yeah. Now, this trip to Zimbabwe, English is their uh, national language. Oh, good. This is the first mission trip I've ever been on <laughs> that I didn't have to have an interpreter. That is great. And it was amazing because there were several times when I stopped waiting for the interpreter, and there yeah. was no interpreter. Yeah. Yeah. And I could just go right on in English. And it gave us actually more teaching time. Of course. And, you know, I think, Larry, we take for granted that the pastors that we have here in the United States, you know, they've been to school, they've been to yeah. seminary, college, yeah. graduate school. They, they know how to pastor. And, and we don't really think about the fact that overseas, in particular now in Africa, there are men who just have a heart for the Lord. But that's basically it, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, as a matter of fact, my, I have discovered that most of the Christian pastors in Africa don't have any training wow. because there are millions of them out in those remote areas. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are the ones that we go for. So what really gave you this passion to do this? I mean, nobody's brought up saying, okay, when I get, uh, I, when I'm a <laughs> Christian, I'm going to graduate from high school, graduate from college, I'm going to go to Africa and teach people how to be pastors. <laughs> what, no. How did this happen? Well, You've known me for a long time, yes. and you know I used to do a lot of music along with the preaching and teaching, yes. and it just kind of continued to go that way. Mm. And we did more and more overseas ministry over the years. And I started out doing discipleship seminars during the day on these overseas trips and doing crusades at night. Mm. But eight years ago, I was in Haiti. And as a matter of fact, I was preaching a crusade. Uh, and uh, the Lord just spoke to me very clearly. And I didn't hear an audible voice, but I knew who it was and I knew who, what he was saying. Mm -hmm. It was very clear how the Spirit moved on my heart. And I was studying 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, where Paul said, The things you've heard of from me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Wow. And God very clearly in that mm -hmm day in that motel mm. in right outside Port-au-Prince, God said, I want all of your energy, all of your focus, all of your time, all of your money wow. to go toward training pastors. Mm. Because I saw more clearly then than ever before that we were turning new converts over to pastors that had never been discipled sure. themselves. Sure. And when I saw that clearly, I realized the need. You had to do it. And uh, so that's what we have done the mm -hmm. last eight years, 
exclusively. Mm -hmm. You know, the lesson that I get from that, Larry, is that, you know, we can go to college and we can get trained. To, somebody even asked me today, uh, this is not what I went to college to do. You know, <laughs> God equipped me to be able to sit here and visit with wonderful Christian men and women yeah. like you. And it's just so neat to be able to be open to the calling of God in our lives. And whatever our vocation is, doesn't mean that that's what we're going to do for 50 years. You know, exactly. he moved me bang, out of teaching school, love teaching school for so many years into doing this, which is just such a joy for me to be able to do so that I can get inspired by people like you who have a heart. But, you know, that's, that's a great message for our viewers to hear today. Well, I take great encouragement from Philip. Philip was one of the seven, you know, chosen mm -hmm. in Acts chapter six. The apostles said, we need some help. Yeah. So they chose Stephen and Philip and five others and they set them apart for ministry. Well, the church started being persecuted. Stephen was martyred. Philip finds himself down in Samaria preaching a citywide crusade. Wow. And he has this incredible crusade. And then over in Acts chapter 21, he's called Philip the Evangelist. Mm. Well, his ministry started out one way. It ended up completely sure. different. Sure. So that's my testimony. I like my that. ministry started out one way completely different today. I never had any idea. Sure. And I had to say to my board years ago, God's taken us this way. You may not have felt this is what you came on board for, but this is where, this is where God's you are leading now. us. That's right. And they all said, let's go. That's great. That's great to have a godly group of people around you that support you, encourage you, and affirm you. Oh, my board. Yeah. They're unbelievable people. And you saw some yes, of them at the Wintley Phipps concert. Wintley Phipps. If you viewers ever have an opportunity to go to that website and, and hear some singing that's going to just knock your socks off, yeah. he is a godly man who has a voice like I've hardly ever heard before in my life. Success stories. I don't want you to get away before you tell us. I know that all this work you've been doing throughout the years has um, had some great fruit. Well, I have been so blessed. And, and sometimes I think I, I'm just unbelievably blessed mm -hmm. to be able to invest my life in the lives of these pastors that don't have any training. Last week in Zimbabwe, uh, an old pastor, you know, I say old, he's probably 70. Mm -hmm. He he came to me and he said, that message on grace was liberating. Mm -hmm. Well, boy, that just resonated with me, mm -hmm. you know, because here's, here's an older man mm -hmm. who's been in ministry for years and uh, without, uh, uh, I think all he had was a couple of years of Bible college. And he was one of the fortunate few, yeah. you know, in that area. Right. But he said that message on grace was liberating. And so that really blessed me. But I began to think of uh, what happened in uh, Nagaland. I was in Nagaland, Northeast India, uh, just a few, as a matter of fact, I think it was the last trip I, I made to uh, Northeast India. And the man who was interpreting for me, one day I did a message on personal evangelism, mm -hmm. personal witnessing, trying to teach them how you lead somebody to faith in Christ. And I went through that message and that night, uh, he goes home and he has two uh, children, a teenage daughter, and he had a son that was about 11 or 12 who I met, great kid. And uh, his son asked him that night about a relationship with Christ. Mm. And he said, mm. I took what you had just <laughs> taught that day yeah. and led my son to Praise Jesus. God. Oh my goodness. And I just, Oh, you that know, would do it for me. That would oh be, that would word. be all I would need. Right. I, I was just totally blown away, oh. you know, by that. And then in Tanzania, just uh, about two years ago, I've had some tremendous conferences in Tanzania. Um, uh, we had uh, a, a conference in a place we had been there the year before. And we decided to come back the following year and do a follow-up conference. We like doing those because it gives us a chance to find out where, where they right. are and what they've done. And one young pastor came to me and he said, last year, he said, God spoke to me about discipling, discipleship. He said, you guys talk so much about discipling people, not just winning them to Christ, but discipling. Yeah. Go and make yeah. disciples. And he said, so I took it seriously. And he said, I won this young man to faith in Christ. I decided I was going to s disciple him, mentor him. And he said, God called him to preach. 
And he said, now he's an evangelist, and here he is right here. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. I, I mean, you could have knocked me over with a feather oh, right yeah. there, you know. That it was is so it was cool. phenomenal that, that, is that is young so cool. man had taken what we shared one yeah. year and he's got fruit the next year. That's right. That's you know. Right. So that was a testimony to me about the ministry of multiplication mm -hmm. and what God wanted us to do in, in this ministry. So it it really has captured my heart to invest our lives in the lives of, of these these pastors that need so much help. Mm -hmm. They don't have yeah. materials like we have. Yeah. They don't have a library to study, right. to prepare sermons. Mm -hmm. And so to, to try to help them understand how to study the scripture, how to memorize scripture, how to put together a yeah. message, how to yeah. teach their people, how to disciple, yeah. those kind of things. It's, it's remarkable. Well, you have done an incredible job. And I think another lesson, Larry, we can glean from you is the fact that you're continuing. You see no end in sight to this. I love that, you know, in the Bible, God didn't talk about retiring. He talked about <laughs> continuing on until he calls us home or at least until he calls us into another line of ministry. But uh, what advice would you give our viewers today if you could speak to someone listening that is maybe uh, not having a lot of ministry focus in their lives or maybe not ministry opportunities? What would you say? Well, uh, I, I often talk to groups about this very subject because we have so much here yeah. and we take so much for granted. And I go places, uh, you know, where they don't have running water, they don't have toilets, they don't uh, eat anything. I've been in conferences where I had beans and rice every day. Mm. You know, that was the menu, yeah. those kinds of things. And I mean, I've been in areas where people live in mud huts and uh, face all kinds of challenges. And I really challenge, Christians in this country to think more about investing in missions, yeah. not taking away from what we give to the church, right. but we all can do more that's right. in investing in missions because I believe that's laying up treasures in heaven. That's exactly right. I really do. Well, I used to say this and I, and I try to be faithful about doing it, but every night when I go to bed, I try to say, what did I do today that had eternal value or eternal significance? And investing in the lives of other people globally, domestically, of course, but globally by praying, by giving, whatever you can do by serving. Look at Larry McFadden and Larry McFadden Ministry. So we're thankful to God today for bringing Larry across our path again. Love hearing your story. Love hearing the update. We're going to have you back again soon. God bless you, Larry. Well, stay with us. We've got some more good stuff coming up.